Hello, Aries. Welcome to your tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I provide. Uh, I am merely the messenger, so I hope you will be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. And remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And there is an Eight of Swords. That's going to be our starting point today. So let's put that into some context with our Dove and Serpent spread. Ooh, already this is looking nice. This is looking really great. Um, if there's anything you'd like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments. Okay, We're going to finish up with our, wow, with our Dove and Serpent spread here, Path of the Serpent. Now for the mystery card, uh, I think we're going to do Rider Waite Smith for the mystery card. I'll just give it a quick shuffle. This card we're going to set aside. We're not going to look at it until the very end of the reading. In fact, we'll put the frog right on top. Leave it right there, and hopefully at the end of the reading, that will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need, right? So, uh, we've got these two major arcana cards. We've got some water, some air, some earth, some fire. Pretty balanced over here. Path of the Serpent, we have some earth, water, water, and then some air at the very end. So, what's going on, I think, right now? has to do with this this eight of swords i almost feel like right now you don't really believe in yourself you know um i feel like the only thing that is blocking your success we have a lot of indications of success we have the two of cups we got the ten of pentacles four of pentacles nine of cups everything is pointing to your tremendous achievement progress success, happiness, fulfillment, uh, a sense of meaning, right? And purpose in your life. The only thing that is preventing that is some kind of, it's either doubt or it's some kind of self-sabotage. It could just literally be that you are telling yourself the wrong things. You know, uh, the eight of swords here is a lot of restriction. It's kind of like being, being tangled up in a, in a knot being tangled up in a web of thoughts, right? Like the, uh, well, like uh, Christmas vacation with the, the jumble of the, of the Christmas lights, right? Here, son, untangle these lights. Well, how do we even begin, right? Um, and I think that's kind of where we are right now, Aries. There is this emperor in your immediate future. Now, the emperor is... The Aries energy. This card represents your essential Aries nature. So it's kind of like um, you're b being blocked right now from entering this Aries nature, from really stepping into your power, owning your power, right? Stepping into this kind of uh, full activation of this confidence, this authority, this ambition, you know? So we're kind of stuck in this tangle. And I really feel that the tangle is just the things that we're telling ourselves. Maybe we're focused on the negative. We're kind of focused on what's not working right now. Okay. Maybe we can shift the focus a little bit. Maybe we can try positive affirmations. Maybe we could try um, to deal with some of these other issues that might be holding us back. Okay, and I don't know what they are. They're, I think they're unique and specific to everyone. I think we all have a few different ones, you know. Um, it feels that it is this mental wall that we've put up. And then we've built this wall in front of us, and then we're complaining that we can't get to our future, that we can't get out of here. Well, we built the wall in front of us. So this could be you, um, you know, rejecting certain things, certain energies, people, certain, um, uh, just anything, you know, certain feelings. Um, this could be you building this wall that keeps these certain thoughts, these negative thoughts 
this self-doubt, uh, this maybe pessimism, all this negative energy, negative thought energy is right here. And we need to get out of this. Okay. And this, I think, is the, the central focus. This is the point, points, so to speak. If you look at all of these cards, this Eight of Swords is really surrounded by some terrific energy. Love and confidence, assertiveness, authority. Whoever this fire sign person might be in your life, it could be, um, it, this could be another person in your life. We'll get to that. You've got this Art or Temperance card here that's just really trying to balance all of your energy focused in on this Emperor, right? And that is going to bring you to tremendous wealth and success. But we have to get away from this Eight of Swords. Okay. Now, the Eight of Swords, I think, is also saying that, look, despite all of your self-sabotage, despite the negative thinking, the patterns that we get into, the, the kind of the certain beliefs and thoughts that we hold about ourselves that may or may not be true, Despite all of our own efforts to prevent our success, you're going to succeed anyway. But why not enjoy the path? Why not make it a little bit easier on yourself by getting out of this Eight of Swords? Okay. And maybe as we go through this, we can see how, well, ultimately how silly it is to be stuck in this Eight of Swords. We have all of this wonderful energy around us. We need to focus on the positive rather than on our own self-doubt, on maybe our lack of confidence or self-esteem. We need to deal with these issues. Now, in the recent past, I see this Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is a very strong bond with someone or something. This could be you having discovered what your purpose is in your life. Okay. Uh, this kind of feels to me that you have had this moment or this moment is just about to arrive where you discover you have this realization of what you're supposed to be doing. It's just, it's kind of this, uh, you know, this refreshing feeling that uh, there's a calm about it, right? You know what you should be doing. You know what your purpose is. You know what your one true love is. It could be a person. It could be an activity. It could be a career, it could be a lifestyle, it could be a social cause, it could be an organization that you really feel strongly connected to. It could be all of these things. Um, it could be <clears throat> many of these things consecutively, right? But this is what we need. We need the that intense love. We need that falling in love with that person, that thing, whatever this whatever this is for you, right? So in order to have this success and have this confidence and move over to this, uh, you know, the building and the happiness and all of this wonderful energy that we see around us, I think we first have to get out of this Eight of Swords. And maybe the way to get out of that Eight of Swords is to think back at these things that you truly are in love with, or maybe from your past what things in your life, people or things, activities, all that, what have you fallen in love with in the past? And how did that feel? Think of your greatest love that you've ever had. Whether it's, you know, whether it's gone, whether it's still here, you know, think about a time where you felt that intense passion and love for someone or something for an activity or for yourself or for life or whatever it is, for God, goddess, deity. Think about that feeling. Because that feeling, I believe, with the way this water energy is configured, I believe that this that feeling is the key to you getting out of this eight of swords and getting to your true nature, your true happiness, your true essential Aries nature, right? And it's through this Aries nature that you're going to achieve the success that is being kind of presented to you, being, being offered to you, should you choose to accept it, right? Because this 10 of discs is really crossing your path. This is telling me that despite this eight of swords being there, 
There is wealth and happiness and success and achievement and accomplishment right on your doorstep. It's right, it's right in front of you being presented to you. And it's not even that you really have to go out and grasp it. It's that you just have to kind of open your hands and it will come into your hands. But you're not going to recognize that if we're so focused on what's right around us. These kind of bars, right? This tangle of wires that we're right in the middle of. And this is not just financial. This is wealth and happiness and success and achievement in whatever areas of life you form this two of cups bond with. Whatever kind of true loves you are finding, you know, right now and tomorrow and the next day and the next day, by remembering how it felt, how the last one felt, or the, you know, the, the greatest love of your life, how did that feel when you had it? And we're not talking about what happened to that. We're talking about that feeling. And that feeling is used as motivation to then push through this Eight of Swords to get that feeling again with a person, a place, an activity, a thing, a career, whatever it may be. Right. And having in your life something that you feel that strongly about, even if it's just, a, like I said, a, a social cause, a charitable organization, a religion or a spiritual um, practice, God, God is deity, whether it's a person, whether it's your pets, your plants, your people, whatever it is, to have that, to have something like that in your life that you feel that strongly about, that's true wealth. Now that might lead to financial wealth, true. It might lead to a sense of uh, physical well-being. The 10 of pentacles is a state. It's a state of being, right? It's kind of a, a static thing. This is having all of this, right? Having success, having fulfillment and achievement, having something in your life that you feel that strongly about that it can pull you out of this kind of cloud, this tangle of, of swords and bring you into your full Aries nature. Okay. <clears throat> now we have up here the art or temperance card. Now maybe I should have gone through the other fire cards first, but through that water energy, we tap into the fire energy, right? And this card is kind of about the union between fire and water. It's about mixing them together to create something that is you know, to create the elixir of life, something that's greater than just the sum of its parts. Yeah, it's made of water, it's made of fire, but the finished product is something outstanding, right? But we have to mix it properly. We can't stay too far in the water because then we get into nostalgia, sentimentality, we kind of get stuck in those feelings, and that can impede progress too. We don't want to get too far stuck in the emperor fire Aries energy because then we just become a bully. We become a tyrant. We become angry and aggressive, right? We have to have just the right mix, just the right mix. So this art or temperance, what kind of art I think is the more apt keyword right now. It's the art of mixing all of these energies together to create just the right uh, medication, right? Just the right elixir for you. And I mean this metaphorically. Uh, I'm not a doctor or a pharmacist or a chemist, so this isn't any kind of literal medical advice, okay? It's, uh, it's an alchemical allegory, kind of, you know. And I think it's the fire and the water that we see here that we need to mix. Now, that's all fine and good in theory, right? We understand abstractly, you got to have a blend of the fire and water so that it's balanced and, and tempered. Um, there's some art and some, some craft to it. But down here with the Queen of Wands, this is, this is the art or temperance card, but now in practice. 
right? That's theory up there. This is practice down here. Because the queen of wands represents the water inside of the fire. The fluidity of fire. The adaptability, the compassion, the spiritual insight, the self-reflection, the depth, right? It's not a superficial fire. It's not a fire that only cares about appearances. It's not a fire that is just a tyrant and a bully and just wants to rage all over the place. No, it's a fire that has depth. It has water. It's these two embodied in, in one being, in you. And that is a representation of this principle. Okay, does that make sense? So this is kind of the, the way that we are going to achieve this 10. Because remember, it's right now we're, we're trying to open our hearts, our minds, our, our arms to receive this state, to welcome in, to usher in that state of wealth and wealthiness. Health and wealth, right? And this is how we do it. By remembering the fluidity of our essential Aries nature, we need to know that we have that water element within us. That's our adaptability. It's our compassion. It's our softness. It's our ability to yield. Right? It's our ability to reflect upon our own actions, our feelings, our thoughts, etc. It's our ability to tap into the spiritual energy, the spiritual light, the intuition. It's that water that we contain within us while we are all Aries all day outwardly. We have that soft spot of water within us. And that's all of, all of those things, adaptability and the compassion, all of that stuff. And that's represented by, by this card, because this is the water inside that fire. The fluidity of the fire, right? And that's the great thing about fire is its fluidity. It can adapt to whatever environment it's in. Fire can, can burn. Of course, there are exceptions to that rule. If there's too much water or if there's not enough air. And I think that's a key too. If there's not enough air, the fire can't really burn properly. This, I think, was too much air. Obviously, eight swords... That's a lot. So that might have been too much air to really get the fire going. So we needed to kind of, we need to get rid of a little bit of that. But going through this fire energy, this is, of course, your essential Aries nature, your confidence, your assertiveness, your decision making, your energy, right? Your, your wakefulness. And this is the way forward. Now, <clears throat> we're moving forward to the path of the serpent. First thing we have is the four of discs. So with this wealth, with this wealthiness, with this fire and water blend, with this kind of magic pill, you're building. You're establishing a foundation for your life. You're maybe literally building. Maybe you're trying to build a business, build a home, build a family, build a relationship, build a career. You are working towards taking this abundance of wealth, right? This wealthiness, which is, again, it's based on that feeling of being so in love with something, right? That it's the, it's the motivation for us. And this is you taking that inspiration, which is a divine thing. And now you're building the church, building the temple, building the home. Okay? And this is kind of the first step. But this is really the only step that matters. You're, you're working, you're building, let's say you're building the church or you're building the temple. Well, spirit, God, God is deity, is in that process of building. Right? You don't have to wait till the building's done and then... You know, God, goddess, deity, spirit comes in and says, oh, yeah, I like what you've done with the place. No, spirit is in the process of building. So in some sense, we, it doesn't matter if we ever really finish, right? I mean, isn't that the secret to business, right? You just keep kind of uh, extending the, uh, the finish time, the, the, the deadline or whatever, the timeline. Um, but that's a different video. Uh, but it's in that process of building, right? I think that's the most important step is to begin the process of building whatever 
whatever structure, either a literal structure or a, you know a metaphorical structure, that will house this greatest love and the wealthiness, the health and wealth that you have through this, right? So it's kind of, you know, the, the house that love built or something. I don't know. Was that a book? That's something. I don't know. Book or a movie. Um, <clears throat> so the four of discs. It's not literally a house, though, you know, you could be building a physical structure. But this is the the structures in your life, the systems in your life, the process in your life, your activities in life, the work that you're doing that is embodying this two of cups, this love, this holiness, really. Okay. And in your environment, we have true happiness. I think that is true happiness. And this card, again, it's um, the nine of cups, not the ten of cups. The tens, remember, like the ten of discs or pentacles, the tens are kind of the, the final state of something, right? It's a state. It's not, a, not the process. It's kind of the final, final outcome. So this is not the final outcome. This is not the finish line. This is not uh, the state of being happy. This is the process of becoming happy. The process of being happy. So it needs to be sustained. It's not just, oh, I'm happy. I'm done. That's, I can kick back now. Just like with wealth or wealthiness or health, it's not just, oh, I've, I'm healthy now. I can just kick back. Don't have to do anything. No, that's why I like the nines more than I like the tens in the tarot generally. Because the nine of cups says that, look, happiness is a, is a, is a state that needs the process. It needs the maintenance, right? So this is something that needs to be continually focused on, worked on, sustained. I think that's an important, uh, I think that's an important lesson. The same way with the, the discs. The ten of discs, sh sure, in an abstract way, it shows the final state of wealthiness, yes. But how does this ten come into existence? How, does, how do we sustain that state of wealth or health through that nine of discs? The gain, the process, the work, the activity, the verb. That's how we sustain a ten of discs is through that nine. It takes maintenance. You can't just, you don't just have money and that's it. You've got to make more, you've got to invest it, you've got to spend it properly, you've got to figure out how to save it or, you know, I don't know, interest rates, whatever. I'm not very good with money. <clears throat> it's the same thing with, uh, with the emotions, with the feelings, with this idea of happiness. It's not a, a finished product. I don't think it ever can really be a finished product. Individual desires can be fully satisfied and we can have a finished product, but overall our life happiness needs to be an ongoing process. Nine of Cups. And what we're seeing next, though, is kind of interesting, and this may take us a minute to figure out. The Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is also an active process because it's an odd number, right? Odd numbers usually indicate the process of something rather than a state of being. What is this the process of? This could be the process of getting too lost in the cup's energy, getting too lost in the process of happiness, that we kind of um, maybe start going in the wrong direction. We're going to here with the Seven of Cups, we're going toward the fulfillment of desires that may be getting a little far away from this Two of Cups. Now it might just be indulging in things, right? It might just be the pursuit of happiness just for the, the satisfaction, right? Just for the fulfillment of desires. But if you have read anything from the Buddha, or in every tradition, it's this idea that the satisfaction of desires only leads to more desires, right? You satisfy one, then the next moment there's another one, 
that comes up, right? And this, I think, the Seven of Cups is recognizing that we don't want to get stuck in that cycle of just fulfilling one desire after the other, one pursuit of happiness or what we think is happiness in that cycle, that habit of just satisfying one desire after the next, after the next, after the next. And we kind of become enslaved to that. That's not much different than this Eight of Swords that we started with, you know? So this card's in a position of what we don't want. We don't, we don't want that. Now the next card, I think, is interesting. This is the final card on the Path of the Serpent. This is some air energy. This is a Princess of Swords. So this kind of brings us full circle to the beginning of the reading where we had that Eight of Swords. And I feel like this, this card is talking about really being aware now through all of this process, remembering where we started with the Eight of Swords, being aware now how our thoughts become reality. Because this is the, the solid aspect of the air energy. This is the world of thoughts becoming concrete, becoming reality. So this card essentially is reminding you that what you think, what you believe, becomes your reality. The way you think influences the way you perceive things, the reality that you perceive. So when we're in this Eight of Swords, the things that we believed were holding us back from the activation of all this really really awesome energy. And this card is reminding us at the end of the day, what you think, the thoughts that you keep playing in your head, that's going to be your reality. Okay. And I think this reading really is about changing the way we think about things, changing the way we think of ourselves, changing what we believe about ourselves. Because whatever we believe, we convince ourselves of that becomes who we are. That becomes what we are, where we are. That becomes our reality. We need to be aware of that. Let's look at that mystery card. Thank you, Frog, for helping me keep an eye on that. Um, what could this be? You know, uh, we have so much of everything already. Maybe, well, we've got a lot of Earth, too. Maybe we could use some, some more balanced air energy. Because now we, we're aware of the air and the kind of dangers with the air and the swords. Maybe we need something to show us that, look, our thoughts can help us. You know, It's not just the things that we don't want in our thinking, but what do we want to continue with? Can we get an indication of positive thinking? Maybe. Maybe this will be some good air energy. Well, even better, it's the Sun card. And the Sun really, I mean, if we're talking about the Sun in Aries, this is uh, quite, a, quite a big confirmation. Now, you could be watching this video for your Moon sign or your Rising sign, or maybe this is your, you know, your Mercury placement, your Venus placement. Um, but the Sun card, I think, is showing the result of all of this. All of this energy integrated, all of this balance, all of the elements, in perfect harmony, ruled by spirit, right? We have all of these elements. We have the earth, we have the air, we have the water, we have the fire, right? With the pentacles and the swords, cups, and the wands. We have the major arcana representing spirit. So we have a very balanced spread here. All of the energies are balanced. And when everything is in perfect equilibrium, that's the activation of this solar energy, right? This, this manifestation of the spirit through your own individual soul. And now it's your, it's your light and life that is sustaining the world, right? Your world, at least. Your reality, your environment. And this, again, is, is kind of reiterating what you believe is true. The energy that you put out, that is what is going to make things grow around you. What kind of light are you emitting? Right? Are you so hot that you're scorching the world? Right? Are you so cold and dim that you are... Nothing can grow. Things are kind of withering. 
right? Are you so, you know, alive and so large that perhaps there's not room for much else? I mean, that's a possibility. I think that this card is all about finding that spiritual sweet spot, right? Like the, uh, the astronomers say that Earth is right in that, in that sweet spot. What do they call it? The green zone or something? I don't know. I think that's something else. Where, you know, they're looking for planets that are just the right distance from their sun. Their sun is just the right size that life is, could be possible. Right? And I firmly believe that there's life in the universe. The entire universe is life. I feel like there are other intelligent life forms in the universe. I'm no mathematician, but I think probability would say that there, there has to be somewhere. Not that we'll ever discover it, or that we already have, or I don't know. But there must be intelligent life out there. Anyway... My point is, um, the perfect balance of these elements is what's going to create you as this solar entity, right? The perfect equilibrium. You're not too big, you're not too small. You're not too fire, you're not too water. You're not too hot, you're not too cold. And this is how you grow your life. This is how you sustain and build this four of discs, that this is how you continue to focus on the process of your happiness. And this is really a spiritual activation because all of the elements are in harmony and they're ruled by spirit. They're animated by the spirit. So this is you as the literal sun in your life, the literal center of your consciousness, right? This is, this is ego as well, but it's also spirit. It's also that kind of vast, that, that infinite nothingness that is kind of the, the rest of outer space, you know, and this sun is right there in the middle, taking care of, of its little local community, right? The solar system, your, your solar system. I love the sun card. I love everything that it represents. And we could talk about that card literally for hours, but I think we're going to do an extended um, if you want to stick around, just click on the link that's right up here. You can have access to all of the extended readings. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Please hit the like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again soon.